When we last left off in the Tour Through Time series, we had explored the period known as the Cambrian and the origin of life as we know it. Now, today, we will be moving forward to the next time period known as the Ordovician period. Beginning around 488 million years ago and ending around 443 million years ago, this period in the Earth's history lasted around 45 million years in total. The beginning of the Cambrian period is often called the Cambrian Explosion due to the incredibly rapid increase of life, plants, animals, algae, etc. Comparably, the beginning of the Ordovician period is often known as the Great Ordovician Biodiversity Event. Not quite as catchy as Cambrian Explosion, but the two events are thought of as being two of the most monumental and influential evolutionary events of all time. The Cambrian introduced animal life to oceans, and the beginning of the Ordovician ran with it, creating more complex creatures and ecosystems and longer food chains, and life began to flourish and spread quickly. The air was filled with carbon dioxide, and the world heated up, making the sea levels rise to almost 2,000 feet higher than what they are today. Shallow oceans covered much of the supercontinent Gondwana, though the land itself was still mostly dry, barren, and lifeless. The oceans, however, were another story entirely. Shallow parts of the ocean were inhabited by corals, sponges, algae, and bryzoans, these guys. Squid relatives, such as the nautiloids, began to show up, dominating the waters as some of the most fearsome and efficient predators of the time. The Ordovician also heralded the rise of the fish, some of the very first true vertebrates. These early fish were jawless and used their mouths to suck up and sift through sand near the seabeds, finding food in the sand. They were also adorned with bony head shields, primitive versions of the armor that would come to define the ancient bony fish. Oh, you know what that sound means. It's time to check on our old pals, the trilobites. Business is booming for our little pals. Originating in the Cambrian period, the trilobites are more diverse and widespread than they'll ever be. The Ordovician trilobites are mostly relegated to the shallow oceans and prefer to stay near the reefs and shores. They have also begun to develop the ability to roll up like an adorable little ball to protect themselves from predators. Although the animals are very successful now, they are about to take a big hit from the Ordovician Silurian mass extinction, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. The Ordovician also introduced the world to these creatures, the nautiloids. These squid-like cephalopods are known by their long, thin, conical shells that grew on their backs, the shells growing along with them as they got older. Some genera, such as the Camaroceras, could grow up to 20 feet long and were equipped with an array of almost a hundred tentacles, which it would use to catch unsuspecting prey, such as trilobites, and move them into its beak-like mouth. But the real kicker in this video, the moment you've all been waiting for and one of the most instrumental developments in all of Earth's history is this, the proliferation of life onto the land. Arthropods, the group that includes insects, scorpions, trilobites, among others, began moving into lagoons and more shallow freshwater environments, slowly but surely inching closer and closer to land. But the first life on land wasn't an animal at all. The winner of the race to land was the plant kingdom. Plants like sporophytes made the leap to solid ground, discovering a whole new frontier of life. And while there's not a lot of evidence for animals on land at this time, there have been what may be fossilized burrows of millipede-like animals found from this time period. More research needs to be done, but you may be hearing about that very soon. Of course, life would have made it onto land a lot sooner if it weren't for a teeny little problem that is, one of the biggest extinction events of all time. Gondwana, the supercontinent, moved down south during this period, moving the continental shelves and the habitats that come with them, before finally coming to rest near the South Pole at the end of the Ordovician period. This had a significant effect on the environment and may have been one of the reasons for the second greatest disaster in Earth's history, the Ordovician extinction. We aren't sure what exactly caused this major extinction event, but there have been theories. One of the most probable has to do with the rapid cooling of the Earth paired with Gondwana's new position at the South Pole. 
we have evidence that the immense amounts of CO2 in the air and the resulting warm greenhouse effect were beginning to dwindle, cooling the planet down by quite a lot. As this was happening and Gondwana drifted south into colder climates, ice caps and glaciers began to cover the supercontinent. Glaciers lock up seawater and ice, and the result is the sea levels dropping dramatically, exposing reefs, leaving ecosystems high and dry, and stripping animals of their homes. This change was so swift and so major that it may have been the cause of an entire extinction event. Other theories include gamma ray bursts, that is, bursts from stars that would have weakened Earth's atmosphere, allowing deadly rays from the sun to scorch the planet, or large amounts of volcano activity. Whatever the cause, this event resulted in nearly 85% of all life on Earth being destroyed in a comparatively small amount of time, around 25 million years. This is just one of the many mass extinction events that has plagued the planet from the dawn of time. The truth is, life is fragile, but endings like this often lead to new beginnings, and the next episode of Tour Through Time will be looking at the Silurian period and how life kept on going after the first massive extinction event. If you want to see that, subscribe so you'll see it when it comes out, and leave a like on the video if you think I deserve it. As always, I've been Luke, and thanks for watching Paleontology Plus.